Hello, and welcome to the virtual reality interview series. I'm your host, Nikia Whitaker Woody, CEO and event coordinator for the VA World Conference. The purpose of this series is a heart led mission. We aim to inspire, motivate, and lift the voices of women who have shaped their paths in the dynamic world of virtual and remote work. When it comes to the style of this conversation, we're committed to being authentic, fully transparent, and maintaining an atmosphere of open dialogue and mutual admiration. We're here not to just tell tales, but to share our realities, the highs, the lows, and the resilience it takes to keep going in entrepreneurship. So without further ado, and with great anticipation, let's pave the way for this conversation with wisdom, warmth, and an eager spirit to learn. Hello, everyone. My name is Nikia Whitaker Woody, and I am the CEO and event coordinator for the VA World Conference. And today, our enterprising visionary is the CEO and boss, I'm sorry, she likes to call herself the boss of Real Assistant, and her name is Marie Lewis. So Marie Lewis is a faith-based leader who is passionate about supporting businesses by promoting efficiency and self-care. We all need that self-care. At Role Assistance, her role as a CEO and business efficiency consultant involves improving processes, evaluating strategies, and implementing solutions that are success-oriented. Marie facilitates back-end administration and streamlines operations as part of her support for businesses. It is Marie's pleasure to assist business owners in relieving their stress and guiding them to freedom. So welcome, Marie. I feel very welcome. Thank you. I'm glad. I'm glad. We will be having Miss Marie's daughter today as well as a guest. She's yes. not feeling well. So we wish her well. Thank you. So my first question is, what motivated you to start this path? It was absolutely God granted. I think that it has always been that way for me. I was raised in the church. Um, my dad is a bishop. My mom is a pastor. So ultimately it's around my entire life. Um, I remember, re re I just remember in the beginning when I was trying to figure out exactly what path I was to go on. Um, I had conversations with family and I prayed a lot and it was just God downloading items into my mind. So it's all God. Cool. Oh my goodness. I, I I have never had that type of inspiration, even though I was raised in the church as well. My mom's a Jehovah's Witness, but I applaud you for listening. Yes. You know, sometimes the, the, what is it called? The church kid, the church kid be like, mm -mm, I'm gonna go all <laughs> whole left. Yes. Okay. So how has this shaped your personal and professional life being that you chose to be a virtual remote professional? So it's interesting because when the world shifted into more of a virtual space, it became a lot easier. Um, I didn't know what a virtual assistant was at first. I kind of felt like, okay, this is the um, thing that people talk about, but never really understand what it is. And on, when I started to learn more about, oh, okay, you can do the things like admin work on a computer and it be, you know, it acknowledged as virtual work, I stepped into the role more so so that I could be able to be more professional and also take on that hat of supporting people virtually. Cool. So what did you do in your career? It's very interesting to say that I started as a computer professional. Well, that's not the truth. I started doing um, psychology and mm -hmm. I said, hey, I can't do anything without a doctorate degree. So it was not going to happen. I just didn't want to go to school for another 10 years. It was just not mm -hmm. something I wanted to do. Um, and then I transitioned over to computer tech, um, which was all the things of just pulling apart computers and doing all the um, inside of it. And then I decided to stick with accounting because it went to accounting. So my trail to get here is completely different than how I actually got here. But um, when I actually started to do uh, the VA work, it was because I was doing admin work inside of church. So mm. yeah. yeah, that church got you right, girl. That church yeah. got you right. 
Yeah. You know, I started psychology in co um, college too. It was a right. very interesting path, but then I was like, mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> so I definitely understand you. So what unique qualities do you bring to the remote working community? I, as a mother and also as a multifaceted woman, I believe that there's a lot of things that you can bring, even from an aspect of a virtual space. Um, I bring first and foremost understanding because I get it when you are a busy business owner who has a responsibility of being a mom, a friend, a sister, just a person who is supporting so many other people. I bring that advocate support because I get it, but also I also make the note to be your accountability partner to, to make sure that you are recognizing the things that you need to do, but also that there is a, an actual deadline to these things. You have to execute them. Um, so I bring those kind of factors in. More so, I try to overall encompass balance. So taking the weight off of you, giving it to me because I enjoy doing this. It's actually a passion. So I enjoy just being able to take all those things and making it less of you and more of me. Yes, I love, I have this passion and it it just drives me. It's like, I'm never really at work because yeah. I'm just loving all about it. Mm -hmm. Okay, you are the queen of self-care. So how do you handle the work-life balance piece? So I believe that having a work-life balance is very tricky because there's really no such thing as balance if we think about it. <laughs> There's just understanding what you will call a line to boundary. So mm -hmm. I always say for me, handling it is being organized enough to make sure there's space enough to take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. um, so that can be saying, I'm going to focus two hours on work and then another hour solely on my child or mm -hmm. however you want to break it up. But just being intentional about how you spend your time. That's really the key of balancing things. Um, and when you do find that sweet spot of this works versus this doesn't work, then you're able to create, create like a schedule around that. And that's balance. Mm, that's right. That is true. Balance is definitely subjective. As I posted yesterday, I take one hour a day mm -hmm. to watch ratchet pop culture shows. <laughs> I mean, like one hour. It, it totally frees up my brain because, you know, yeah. you're always going. You always have these ideas. Yeah. You're just concentrating on business. And this totally erases my brain. Yes, I love that. Totally. <laughs> okay, so what do you feel like can be done in the industry with our community so that we can make it more inclusive and empowering? What I realize is that a lot of people don't know how to let go. A lot of people do not know how to say, yes, I need help. They don't mm -hmm. know how to ask for help because they don't like to be that damsel in distress. They don't like yes. to be the person who's going to say, oh my gosh, I can't handle these things. I strongly believe that God has given us all that we can bear, but sometimes he also reminds us that we are our brother's keeper. So we have mm. to be able to just let go and let God, um, and also just allow us to live freely in the things that we want to live in and uh, allow the, the other parts of our businesses to grow. So I think within our community, the struggle is just overall, I want to keep it all to myself. It's a little bit selfish, but mm -hmm. it's also about learning how to just be more of a family base. And I'm not saying family as in just like mm -hmm. your actual innate family, but mm -hmm. just giving and pouring back into others because we really are here to support each other. So that that's is so true. That is so true. That is one of the main tenets of the VA World Conference is trying to build this community to show others in, in reality of this podcast that, you know, you're on alone. Everyone has the background crap that's going on. You know, nobody is perfect. Nobody is getting it out of the mud and then rich. You know, we all have the things. So definitely um, learning that. I myself had to really um, work on investing in myself. Um, I literally have been in business for five years and I just went on my first retreat this year. Like I have never paid a coach. I have never, you know, I literally did everything by instinct. I literally tried to do it all. Um, so I am just now learning with having the two businesses that I do need support okay. and, and I, I, I'm not failing because I'm asking for support. 
Mm -hmm. So definitely understand that. Um, in pursuit of the collective growth, how do we ensure our individual growth is not compromised? We have to take a step back and look at self. Um, what I realized within the pivots that I've done, and I say it pivots because mm -hmm. it's transitional. Um, I always have to say, okay, God, where do you want me? And am I aligned with that? Because when we get too caught up in the, oh my gosh, things are moving. We get so caught up in just doing so many things that we get overwhelmed. We get burned out. We don't think about how we can actually give back to self. Mm -hmm. So within our personal growth, I always say, take the time to do self check-ins, make sure mm -hmm. that you're taking those CEO days, make sure you're taking those times where you can say, okay, listen, I have a, a, a checklist and I know many people like write notes down and things. Mm -hmm. Are you checking those items off? Like what mm -hmm. exactly is that you need to do to progress? And from there, you can see more growth when you're steadily aiming towards a goal. So it's always fun to just definitely a good, um, a good thing to have. I personally try to do a quarterly, um, check in with myself and okay. that I write down all the things that I have planned out. I write mm -hmm. down all the things that I wanted to do and didn't get to do and reevaluate. Do you really need to do them? Um, I am really big on um, continual, continuous learning and professional organizations yeah. and all that those can provide to make sure I'm up to date. I am out there and, and and I know the things that I need to know. So, and I always promote that in my group as well. You know, professional organizations will get you everywhere for real. Yeah. Definitely. I mean, put you in so many rooms. I'm I'm attending the U.S. Black Chambers um, honors next Saturday, and okay. I am attending a networking event, which is networking and training all day tomorrow. So, I mean, you never know where these type of things can take you. So I definitely think we need to um, work on ourselves in addition to trying to get back. Absolutely. Um, how do you tap into the commonalities with your fellow professionals and foster shared values and inspirations? I am all about sharing is caring. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think that knowledge is so free that we just sometimes don't know how to just give it without feeling as if we're giving too much or it's going to give away my goodies. No, honestly, people pay for the emotions. They pay mm -hmm. for the connections. The experience, they pay for the yes. Experience and the experience. So for me, I love to share amongst anything else, um, just the freebies that I've learned over the, the past years of working within this field. And I like to learn from other people. So I support other businesses. I go into mm -hmm. their workshops. I go into their communities. I pay for those services so that mm -hmm. I can understand how they're doing it. Not to swipe, but really kind of like to understand like, well, maybe it works for them. It may not work mm -hmm. for me, but this right. is an insight that I can be able to have that works mm -hmm. for other people. So it's all yeah. about understanding. That is true. I know that um, I went to a uh, uh, training for one of my clients yes. and what I got out of it was that everyone can drink from the same cup no drink from the same well yep. but they take that well water and they have their own cup so I mean yep. we all have remote businesses and we know what we need to know as a collective but you then have to transform that into your own message to yes. make it personal to you so while we're all in a remote industry we all have different niches we all have different specialties we all have different things that we want to do for our clients so i definitely think that yeah we we need to learn to understand that it's collaboration over competition yep. um we need to definitely make sure that we are sharing because by sharing you are encouraging someone else who might think it's too hard to do so that is one reason I definitely um, try to portray authenticity and transparency. I mean, you see me when I ain't slept all night. You see me when I'm fighting with the cat. You you, you see me. <laughs> so, I mean, it's not, oh, oh, I want a grant. Or, oh, I'm making this amount of money. It's, did you see all the stuff that happened? In exactly. addition to all that. Yeah. How do you handle setbacks and keep it motivated? I know you have a great faith, but what else do you do? Oh, trust me, feelings are real. Emotions are real. Like when you get into that funk, it feels so low and annoying because you sometimes don't know how to get out of it. I think we all go through that in waves as mm -hmm. entrepreneurs. I think that even um, small business owners may go through it as CEOs. Mm -hmm. um, the ways that I get through them specifically is 
honestly, by just stepping away, I think it's mm-hmm. so important for me to be able to say, I need a day and I don't need to, um, force myself to go through another stage of, let me pressure myself into pushing forward. There are times that I've done that and then I've gone into a deeper hole. Mm -hmm. So the way that I get out of that is really by just stepping away, taking the time to reevaluate, see if I'm disaligning with something and then to then reprocess what I'm thinking. And it works nine times out of 10. Yeah. I know recently I had to cancel the conference because I was doing way too much and I felt like it was a, a definite setback. Um, I was defeated. I was definitely defeated because I'm like, I put so much energy into this and to have to make a decision and publicly make a decision to say I failed was a lot for me. But again, it was a setback and now we're back with a whole different model and it's feeling better and all the things. So definitely know that, you know, we have to keep ourselves motivated. And sometimes that does mean admitting that one thing isn't working and revamping and stepping back as well. Um, What does personal empowerment look like for you? What do you do to empower yourself? So I used to do this thing where I used to write sticky notes on um, my mirror and I used to mm-hmm. just post like the posty notes on there. It was so cool at one point, but then I kept forgetting to rewrite the new ones. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I was looking at the old ones and I found that that was empowering for me because waking up to a Bible verse on my window or somewhere that I can see it, it was encouraging every day to understand that this is great. The other thing mm-hmm. I transitioned to doing is I got off of Shein like these quotes. And so I was putting quotes around the place just to make sure I can see it. So one of them was above the door that says, give it to God and go to sleep. So mm-hmm. it was always like things to help me to motivate myself to go into the next day or do the thing that I need to do. Nowadays, what I do is I like to write. I like mm-hmm. to just write my thoughts down. I like to really um, just, I guess, disassemble myself, just kind mm-hmm. of p- piece together the day or um, I think make sense of the day based on the events of the day. Mm-hmm. So if, for example, if um, someone was late to a call, I'd say, okay, well, they were late to a call, but I was able to give more time to something else or whatever the case mm-hmm. is. So most times I'm really just trying to find the pockets of peace throughout the day so that I could be able to move forward to the next day. And each day it gets, it grows bigger and I could be able to just keep going. That's very interesting. I'm trying to think, what do I do? Um, I have the I have the Calm apps calendar um, downloaded to my to my calendar. So it reminds me to breathe and mm-hmm. it reminds me to listen to some white noise. Mm-hmm. Um, I've tried to journaling. Journaling doesn't work for me because, you know, as a person <laughs> with a mental health disorder, this brain is going a mile a minute and it just ain't working for me. But I mean, I, I understand it works for some people. So, I mean, I think that me personally saying, Oh, you need to breathe. Oh, remember to eat because that's empowering too. You know, remember yes. to eat because sometimes I get so hyper focused that I am literally sitting there all day and didn't eat and didn't finish my coffee or you know things like that. So I I I have a definite need to work on my self empowerment. So okay. thank you. I will work <laughs> on maybe a sticky note. I don't yeah. like the sticky note idea basically um for for per se, but I do use um whiteboard markers on yes. my mirror in my bathroom. Love that. I usually use it to remind me I need to buy something, but I can personally take take some notes and put put on my mirror. So when I go to brush my teeth in the morning, it empowers me for the day. So great thoughts. I will use that. <laughs> what steps have you taken to build a sense of community? Mm -hmm. so communities are very subjective Mm -hmm. and so the way that I find communities to be right now for me I have a VA community that is not being used as frequently as it should because a lot of times people just come in for free information Mm -hmm. they don't want to commune they don't really want to communicate and then they leave or they Mm -hmm. just don't say anything for me what I've been doing instead is building a community around um, tools that I love. So Mm. just finding people who are in love with the type of stuff that I do. So on my YouTube, I have a community there because I'm um, posting videos that are engaging for Sweet Mm -hmm. Dash or, you know, Mm -hmm. other vlog type videos. Um, And then in the other aspect of community is I try to really just 
find different like communities to join that I've already, you know, worked with clients or people that I see on, um, on Instagram. I want to just join their community so that I can mm -hmm. see that. So I think communities are just very unique, but for mm -hmm. me, I'm still in the space of trying to understand if it's really my thing. <laughs> yeah. I know I have a community. Um, I had one that I started with a um, friend and um, it grew to over 700 people. And, and I found that um, inspiring in that I was able to learn and grow while they were learning and growing. So, you know, they got to see my mistakes and everything. Um, when I transitioned over to the VA World Conference, I started another group and we're almost to 100 people, which is great. Um, and I get to be my transparent self and I get to hear all of the, this is what I need, or this is what I'm working on, or I find you so inspiring because you, you were transparent with this, um, or I provide resources and they were like, I would have never thought of this, you know, who gets a trademark as a BA? Me, mm -hmm. you know, who does all these things? Who's getting rents? Me, you know, right. I'm thinking out of the box and showing them that there is more than one way to get it done. So, um. I find that community is definitely subjective. Um, my community does um, at times deal with the not being responsive or engaging as well. I think that's that's something for everyone, especially as entrepreneurs. We're busy. Our heads yeah. are down trying to get it done. So, yeah. I mean, I don't fault it. You know, I still show up every day. I do a video every morning. I, I provide reasons throughout the day. So, you know, um, so I definitely think community is subjective, but I do think we need the community. We definitely need someone to say, I see you. I feel you. This is what I'm going through. You're going to get through it. So I definitely that. feel that. Um, as a woman of color, specifically, what unique perspective do you bring to the table? I see a lot of women of color struggling to just find the right fit in their team. Um, I think a lot of times we try to get the quick and easy type of vibe. So we go to like fiber or up work, right? Mm -hmm. And when yeah. a lot of people come to me, they're saying, oh, I've tried a VA before and I don't know, but it didn't work out the way that I thought it would. And so I get that sense of shortcut type of vibe sometimes from us. And I don't necessarily like that because we have quality, like we, mm -hmm. we should know mm -hmm. the quality when we see it. But sometimes we fail to actually experience it because we don't know where to go. So I think it's either the lack of resources and sense of understanding where to find these quality type mm -hmm. of experiences, or it's really just the 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 more shortcut versus where they want to just find the, the quick and easy and then they find the failure and then it's like, oh, you know, they give up. So mm -hmm. that's the struggle that I think that happens currently with us that I mm -hmm. hope that it stops soon. Mm -hmm, definitely. I, I know for me, the unique perspective is we just need to be more transparent. Yeah. You know, we're not perfect. I mean, I know a lot of people see me doing all the things, but they don't see that I only sleep four hours a night. Um, And that's no fault of me being overworked or nothing. You know, it's just medical condition. I don't sleep a lot. But I use that superpower to be more productive and more resourceful and to give back to my community. So um, I definitely think as women of color, we have to get over the strong woman syndrome. We have to yeah. get over, I got to do it by myself, yeah. um, that no one understands me or somebody wants something from me. Yeah. You know, so definitely we need to handle that. What is a notable challenge that you've encountered? As of late, it's been very challenging for me to step more so into the mom role and less into the CEO role. My daughter is becoming two this year, and I feel as if it's time for me to really get her into the shifting of understanding more of like the basic sight words and things like that and not <laughs> coming behind my computer. And I see her when I come behind my computer, she'll come, she'll sit on me, she'll start typing and things mm -hmm. like that. So I think it's just finding the... um the balance between again that's subjective but finding that that sweet spot in between being a mom and also being a ceo because i love both in both respective places i just feel like there's always something that's up and down in that space because even though they are not my children my uh clients feel as if sometimes i have to also advocate for them i have to make mm -hmm. sure that they are doing all the things so they are in a way and i'm responsible for them in some type of way mm -hmm. so it's kind of balancing an odd amount of children in in a you know physical aspect mm -hmm. and a virtual aspect. 
Yeah, I understand that challenge as well. Um, being a mom, she's 22, but <laughs> I take her to work every day. I still feed her. Like literally, mom was for dinner. So, you know, I, I definitely understand. And then, then I have my mom who's like, what's for dinner? Did you go to the store? Can you do this for me? <laughs> then there's the husband. Yeah. Um, in addition to running two business and working full time. So it's like, what? <laughs> like what you want like what, what where do you find the time you know and I've also um been blessed with all these opportunities so like my calendar is full and it's like uh, do I do this or do I not do this is this burning a bridge you know how yeah. do I be successful and still get all the things done and get to enjoy and appreciate them at the same time instead of being like oh my god I'm so burned out because I'm getting all these blessings okay. you know I don't want to block my blessings from being exacerbated with the the opportunities exactly. so definitely understand that um what else do i have for you do you have one of your golden moments when you just felt so empowered so i always say this it's one of the things that um i don't really sit back and do often but when I started in this VA world, I remember praying and saying, God, well, just send me the one client, right? I'm going to manage the one client. I got the one client. It was great. And then I got two more clients and it was great. But then as the workload started to pile up and I was able to you know, do all the things by myself at one point, I was like, I think I need to delegate, right? So I was blessed with the opportunity to be able to afford a team. Mm -hmm. So I started to build my team. And I think over time, I kind of look at myself and I'm like, those were golden moments. Like mm -hmm. those were places where I did not think about the blessings and the abundance of which I was just in and mm -hmm. still am in because mm -hmm. it's able, I'm still able to afford a team. I'm still able to, you know, retain clients without doing marketing. I'm still able to, you know, do all these things that it's really a, a really a space of grace and mercy mm -hmm. for God. So I think it's so important sometimes for me, even in this moment to kind of sit back and say, huh, that thing happened. I'm still running. It's still successful and things are preventing. Like it's mm -hmm. amazing. So I have those golden moments and I'm even grateful for this one, being able to speak mm -hmm. with you. It's a golden moment because I have been in connection with you for a while. Mm -hmm. And now we're working in this space where I can be on this podcast and do all the things. So I'm appreciative. Yes, I'm definitely appreciative of the connection. Um, and all the things that we are planning to do together. Um, you mentioned marketing. Marketing is like my worst, <laughs> my worst thing that comes with running this, running both businesses. Yeah. Um, speak to that. How do you feel about it? What do we need to, as entrepreneurs, realize? It's not one size fit all. It mm -hmm. will be different for each type of business. It will be different for each type of client. Um, I have went through a whole lot of marketing strategies, right? I've spoken mm -hmm. to strategists. I've tried to do the, the straight line sales pitchiness. It does mm -hmm. not work for me. Mm -hmm. What I found that works is the storytelling marketing, just being able to showcase my life in the real time, in the real sense. Mm -hmm. And connecting with people based on that. Um, and that is my quote unquote marketing, you know, mm -hmm. um, a lot of times also marketing for me is through referrals. So it's through mm -hmm. someone connecting with me, understanding who I am, appreciating my experience, and then referring mm -hmm. me to someone else who would do the same. Mm -hmm. So over time, I think we just have to learn that marketing is going to just be a rough patch unless you mm -hmm. kind of get all the things in order and then you do a one shot and it works and you continue doing that one path and it mm -hmm. continues to work. Yeah. I know when I first started, I literally couldn't speak on camera. I would <laughs> hyperventilate every time. And now I'm like a pro at it, but yeah. also too, you know, there is this unreal expectation that we are supposed to post every day, write yeah. a blog, do mm -hmm. reels, do all these things. And you're right, it's subjective. That's mm -hmm. that's overpowering for me. I mean, yes, I do do a lot of videos, but those are like real world videos. Those are like behind the scenes of my life video. Right. Um, and I found that that has really gotten me the connections that I'm getting as well. 
um, because they see that I'm real. Um, yes. I do intersperse my um, expertise. You know, I'll put a stat out or I'll do my testimonials or I'll write about something that, that you know, I've learned or whatever. But for the most part, it's just me being real and people gravitate to that. It also has helped me to connect with other people. You know, being that I'm on social media, I get to see other women who are in my same industry and that helps me to get to know other people, to reach out and connect with them and thus have resources for when I want to plan the conference or if I want to do a collaboration or if I need to refer someone to someone else. I don't always have to be worried about, oh my God, they don't fit me, you know, continuing to support other people by just using my marketing. So I definitely think that that is subjective and everyone should know that it's subjective. You do not have to do a video three times a day. You yeah. do not have to do all the things and create all the graphics and write all the things because yeah. it's not necessarily needed. Yeah. And also no. to piggyback off of that, a lot of times as well, people say, ah, oh, man, you have to match the algorithm. You have to post this mm -hmm. much. You have to do this. And as you're mentioning, there is no real structure to it. But I think when it works for you, it works for you. I think you have to find that pocket of, mm -hmm. okay, this is how many times I'm comfortable with showing my face. Mm -hmm. or this is how many times I'm comfortable with posting because you have to make it genuine. It has to mm -hmm. be you to the truth. Yes. Of you. Does it, it does have to be genuine. I was um doing something the other day and I went through my Instagram feed. Mm. And I noticed that in a lot of my Instagram feeds, I have a solo cup. Interesting. And my daughter was like, I mean, my daughter always says that my favorite thing is my solo cup, but like, I never realized that I literally have a solo cup in most of my photos. Um, and I don't want people to automatically think there's liquor in it most times, mm -hmm. but it's like, <laughs> oh my God, I wonder if people think that I'm not an effective entrepreneur because I'm drunk all the time. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, sometimes people are so um, anal about their feed that they literally do this 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 thingy mm -hmm. i literally don't have the time for that <laughs> yep. if you got the time more power to you time. but i ain't worried about that grid <laughs> yeah there are more <laughs> important things it's to worry right. about so yeah. i mean i think too people realizing that the solo cup is there mm -hmm. speaks to my speaks to my being real as well so definitely <laughs> but i'm like oh my god i had a solo cup i I think it's hilarious because you don't see it and they see it, but then you you know you, so you know exactly what's going on in the background. Yes, I was talking to a friend from the retreat I went to and she introduced me to day drinking. Mm. I was always so nervous about that. Like, do you drink before 5 a.m.? And we went to this retreat and literally they were drinking in the morning. I'm like, so you do day drink? And so, you know, we had this conversation about do you put that on social media when you're a business owner? Mm. You know, because they have all these memes about it's five o'clock somewhere and, yep. you know, I would love a good tequila and all those things. And it's like, I see them sometimes and I'd be like, oh, I want to post this because it's so true. But then I'm like, mm, is that appropriate? So yeah, social media is subjective, but I really think the, the best way of handling it is to do what you feel you need to do at the pace you need to do it, all those things, because you don't want to get someone used to something. And then when they work with you, they'd be like, whatever, isn't it? <laughs> exactly. Because I've, I've had that conversation where I had a client and she was like, do you ever smile? Do you ever laugh? Like, I don't know how to take you. And I'm like, you know, I am very serious, especially when I'm working because mm -hmm. I come from corporate and in corporate, you do your work. That's so, true. you know, I'm not here to be your friend and I'm not here to hee hee ha with you. I'm here mm -hmm. to get something done. So I have to work on that myself and being more cognizant of the moment and with people understanding that most times I'm not smiling. <laughs> yeah. Hey, it's normal. <laughs> so my last question is this. Where did I put it? Mm, okay. Me and these questions. What is one piece of wisdom or inspiration that you can give for those embarking on their own remote journey? I will say to never give up. Just make sure that you're going to be in this for the long haul, because once mm -hmm. you get started, you cannot stop. Entrepreneurship is not for the weak in mind. 
It's not for those who feel like, oh, I'll have freedom all the time. No, it gives you more work. It gives you more structure. There is a lot to do to build it up. But once it's built, you'll be proud. It'll be the one thing that you will always say, I did this. I did not stop. I kept going and now I'm here. So just be encouraged each step of the way. Yes. The main point is to just start. Yes, definitely. So that concludes our virtual reality interview with Miss Marie Lewis. I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. I look forward to us collaborating and working later. Miss yeah. Marie is going to be our keynote speaker at the VA World Conference this year <laughs> in May. So look forward to seeing her face all over the place. And I want to remind our viewers that we are not just talking. This was not just an interview. We are sharing, growing, and reshaping the narrative for women in this industry. So let's continue to shine together. See you next time.